So last year, our two-year-old daughter, Nora, started coughing herself to sleep every night. Nora had always been the sicker of our two children. Um, her first year was one of endless colds, ear infections, trips to urgent care. Um, so when the coughing started, we thought it was just more of the same. But it wasn't. It was worse. Night after night, we'd hear her tired little body struggle to fall asleep while her lungs coughed her back awake over and over again. And she wasn't getting better. So her doctor put her on medication um, that required her to wear a breathing mask for 20 minutes twice a day. And that wasn't working. And then she added the steroids, and those weren't working. Um, and as a lot of you know, um, when you're a parent, being helpless while your child is suffering is just agony. Um, after six months of this, our doctor said, Nora has asthma. And these breathing problems are going to follow her through childhood and even beyond. And I burst into tears. But asthma, asthma, I, I knew somewhere that bad air can cause asthma. And I thought, my goodness, I wonder if it's the air in our house. We live close to a busy freeway. Um, and all those cars and trucks just spewing out all sorts of stuff, especially during rush hour. It's all building up in our house and can't get back out again. So um, I learned about an air filter, got one, installed it. And after six months of all of that awfulness, the coughing was gone in two days. So that seems like a happy ending, right? <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> I am a green building professional, for goodness sakes. And I'm actually a good one, too. I am invited to give dozens of talks a year on the connection between buildings, our health, and the environment. And yet, somehow, my own home was invisible to me. I could not see the impacts it was having on the health of my family. Odds are your home is invisible to you too, and your office, and your child's school. I mean, good Lord, we are in a building right now. <laughs> Do you see how they just sneak up on you? <laughs> Our homes, offices, and schools are this massive unseen force that is dragging down our health and our productivity and the environment with them. And we are not able to pay attention. But there is a solution. In fact, it's going to seem too simple. Two little questions, two little questions can solve most of these problems, can reduce that pollution, and can improve the health of everyone around us. So at this point, you may be thinking, I mean, really, buildings? You cannot possibly be as serious. This, this can't possibly be as big of a deal as she says it is. Well, yes, buildings. Buildings are just like slabs of stuff, right? Well, that stuff where you put your stuff, it's doing stuff to you. There, there is a giant mound of science to back me up on this. There's lots of studies. One of my favorites um, comes out of Harvard in their public school public health. So do me a favor. We're all going to imagine that we have signed up to be participants in this study. So you have very generously agreed to do your regular job at a remote office for a couple weeks. OK? Easy. Same office every day. And at the end of each day, you are playing a little game on the computer that measures the quality of your decision making. OK? Um, on some days, it is going great. You are nailing it at this game. You are making all the right choices. You have the information you need. You're solving current problems. You're anticipating stuff down the road. It's great. But on other days, decision making is like walking knee deep in mud. You, you're not making any of the right choices. Problems are just cropping up at random. What is going on? Well. What is going on is one of those sneaky Harvard folks is manipulating the levels of carbon dioxide and some other common pollutants on some days, but not others. But don't worry, those are all within normal legal operating conditions that you'd find at an office today. No big deal, right? Well, the difference in your performance, friendly research subject, on a good day versus a bad day 
it's not like 6%, it's, it's 61%. And to put that number into some perspective, a 100-person company would need to hire an extra six people just to make up for the productivity losses the bad air is causing. It's like, you know how we all have that coworker who's like really annoying, and we, let's call him Todd, and it's like, Todd, be quiet. I don't need to hear your opinions on Quentin Tarantino movies anymore. We have moved on. Todd, I need to focus. Bad air is like the Todd that you breathe. <laughs> and it's not just air. The list of impacts that buildings have on us, they just go on and on. If it is uh, too hot in your child's classroom, she is less likely to pass the next standardized test and make it to college. Buildings are causing an estimated $225 billion annually um, in the US in lost productivity and increased health care. And that's just the health side. On the environmental side, buildings are 40% of US carbon emissions. 40%. Cars? are only 26%. Now, the difference between those two numbers, I think, is actually kind of instructive. Um, the average car used to be a lot more polluting, but rising public awareness, regulation, and consumer choice has made them a lot cleaner. That process is just starting with buildings, but most still lurk invisible. I'm not even going to get it into the impacts on water, noise, plants. The list just goes on. And so you might be thinking, OK, so she said there was two simple questions that were going to solve this problem. Those are for architects, right? Let's go yell at some architects. No, believe me. Um, I work with great architects all the time. Architects, engineers, construction folks, they want to build and design environmentally friendly, healthy buildings. They're a little bit trickier, but they want to do it. And they will jump at it every chance they get. The problem is that us as occupants, we are not asking for better buildings, and so we are not getting them. And why is this happening? Well, buildings don't come with nutrition labels, right? So we, we just don't know what they're doing to us. Um, there are exceptions to this nutrition label issue. Um, we at TED love to talk about technology. Um, there are art pieces out there that change color based on air quality. Um, there's all sorts of apps you can download on your phone to turn um, energy monitoring into a game. And I'm sure by this time next year, all of you with your smartwatches, that's going to be measuring ambient carbon dioxide. But like none of that is going to do any good unless we actually fundamentally understand what buildings do. It's like putting an organic label on a banana if nobody knew what organic meant. But there are solutions and we are going to solve them right now, okay? Get ready. We are going to stop thinking of ourselves as passive occupants and tenants of our buildings we are gonna realize that we have active relationships with our buildings. We are essentially um, dating our buildings. <laughs> and we don't even know it. Surprise, you're polygamous. <laughs> your mind may not know that you're dating your building, but your body already does. And just like a new boyfriend or girlfriend can either help you thrive or drag you down, your building can too. Your office is already making you more productive or more lethargic. Your home is already replenishing the earth or taking from it. Your child's school is already helping them learn or hindering them. But we can fix this problem. Basically, we need to go to couples therapy with our buildings, guys. We need to work on improving those relationships because as we all know, a good relationship takes some work. So what are we gonna do? Here are the two simple questions. The first one is going to be about carbon dioxide, all right? And the reason you wanna know about that is because the difference between good air and bad air is eight IQ points for you. The second question, the second thing you're gonna be asking about is um, energy star scores. So carbon dioxide, good, bad. <laughs> the second question you're gonna be asking about is energy star. Now you probably know energy star as these little blue labels that uh, tell you that like your dishwasher or a light bulb is efficient. Okay, so Energy Star exists for buildings. 
and it ranks them, and the difference between a good score and an average score, that's the difference in carbon emissions of about a third. Now, and don't forget, buildings are 40% of carbon emissions. So this is a big deal, okay? So here are the questions. What are the carbon dioxide levels in my building? Are they somewhere around 550 parts per million? And the second question is, what is the Energy Star score? Is it 75 or better? So now you might be thinking, well, Sarah, that sounds great. Except, who am I supposed to ask? Thank you for paying attention. I tested the air in this room. It is very good. So I know that you're retaining everything that we're saying. Um, uh, so just letting you know, if you are wondering about your own home, you're going to have to get a carbon dioxide monitor or download one of those fun apps that monitors energy use. But if you're wondering about work, I suggest starting with human resources. You can send them a little email. Hey, I've been learning about the connection between buildings and health and the environment. I'd like to know what's going on here. Carbon dioxide around 550? Energy Star 75 or better? Human resources, by the way, will not know the answer to these questions, but they will know who to get in touch with. This is the same goes for the front office at your child's school and for the landlord of your apartment building. And I, I just want to be totally clear, the eventual person that this, these questions go to, they will likely not know the answer either. That is why you are asking. By raising the awareness, we are going to solve this problem. And that is true, by the way, even if your company doesn't own your office building, and it probably doesn't. Do not worry. Ask anyway. There are so many things building owners can do that are easy and impactful. They might do a lighting retrofit. They might jack up the ventilation. They might install some cheap software uh, that makes the building run better. Guys, don't feel guilty. When you move out, if they can show that their building is energy efficient and enhances productivity, they can and will charge more rent. They should give you a cookie for asking. And if you happen to be running your own company and you are not asking about energy efficiency and air quality, you are just wasting money <laughs> and missing out on the cheapest and easiest way to boost productivity that there is. Studies conservatively estimate that the difference uh, between good and bad air for a company is $300,000 a year in profit not revenue, profit for a 100-person company. Who doesn't want that? An air quality test costs less than a single employee sick day. It is worth it. And if you're not asking about energy efficiency, you're just uh, taking out your wallet and throwing money on the ground. Now, you might be thinking, OK, I got it. Air quality, energy star. I'm definitely going to ask this. Great. But if you really want to change the world, Try to get two other people in your life to do the same thing. Text your sister, post it on Facebook. I might suggest starting with your frenemies. Oh, you haven't asked about air quality in your office? Well, I'm so busy that my productivity is really important to me, but if it's not a concern for you, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> now, OK, let's say that you and your sister and your frenemies all ask about this, and you get ignored. This may happen, keep asking. When we ask these questions, change will happen very quickly. But in the meantime, there are some things you can do. You can get a HEPA air filter for your home or your office. Um, our child's school has them in every classroom. There are indoor plants that filter the air. The one at my desk is uh, charmingly called a lady palm. Um, there's another called Janet Craig, which I like to think of as like Jenny Craig's more botanical sister. Um, there are smart thermostats you can get that help you deal with your home energy use. If you haven't switched your lights to LED, those are cheap and available everywhere. We have so many options for improving our relationships with those buildings that we're dating. And guys, when we do, amazing things are going to happen. There are thousands of healthy, environmentally friendly buildings going strong right now, and here's what happens. If your office goes from bad air to good air, you and your coworkers just get an eight-point IQ bump. If your building goes from average to an Energy Star score of 75, that is the environmental equivalent of planting over 3,400 trees. And if you fix the ventilation, 
in your child's school, she will have a longer attention span in the classroom and get more math problems right on the next standardized test. And if we all do this, we can cut our country's greenhouse gas emissions overnight by about 12%, while adding billions of dollars to the economy in increased productivity and reduced healthcare costs. And on a personal level, when we realize, when you realize that you are dating your building and you work to improve that relationship, you can go from this to this. And I promise you the second one is way better. Thank you.